Hi mom, welcome to the session. This is Shweta Roy, your English master teacher at Vedant. Hope all of you are doing well. So guys, the chapter, the poem that we are going to study today is After Blenheim. I hope you people have already visited the previous session, right? The previous session, in the previous session what we did was the half of the poem, right? It's a long poem so I thought of, you know, dividing the poem into two sessions so that it is absolutely uh, clear in your mind that there is no confusion. Okay, guys, and after this, of course, we will have a one shot of this particular poem so that you have the entire mapping of the poem in front of you. Okay, so now let us start off with today's session. But before that, do let me know in the chat box how many of you are super excited for the session. Give me a quick thumbs up in the chat box, show some love, show some excitement, guys, in the chat box. All right. So, let's get started. I'll start with a very, very, very interesting game with you. And this is the riddle that you need to answer. Okay? Now, the riddle says, what am I? You bury me when I'm alive. You dig me up when I die. Can you tell me in the chat box, guys? What's the answer for this particular riddle? What am I? You bury me when I'm alive. You dig me up when I die. Very, very simple, guys. I hope you people have already answered that in the chat box. Yes? Can we check? Can we check? Okay, let's check the answer. It is, of course, a plant. How many of you have got it correct? Give me a quick high five in the chat box, please. All right. So, with that, let's proceed with the session. So, before proceeding, guys, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to share the video amongst your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't because we will come up with each and every chapter in detail and I do not want you people to miss out on anything, on any notification. So, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do subscribe. Now, we will start with the recap of the previous session. So, those of you who have not visited, guys, please do visit the recap and then come to the session so that you can answer all the questions correctly. Can we start? Yes, super excited. Give me a thumbs up, guys, and we will start. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the word of the day. The word of the day is rigmalore. It is a noun which means a meaningless talk or a complex procedure. This word has been given by Renessa. Thank you so much, Renessa, for giving this word to all of us. And now, since she has not given the sentence, uh, I saw in the previous session uh, that you people have a few of you. I think I got one or two uh, people uh, giving the word of the day, guys. So please do give the word of the day at the uh, end of the session in the comment section. Also, along with that, please use this particular word in sentences and please post it in the comment section because in the next session i will be taking up your uh, points your your words okay and your sentences too so don't forget to use your word in sentences and use this particular word also in sentences okay hope you guys will do that yes yes everyone yes okay good job so moving ahead with the first i'll take the top five names okay after blenheim part one People who have given the answer after watching this video, thank you so much, guys. Abdul, Renessa, Tanmay, Chirag, Nirmala. Good job, people. Good job. And uh, uh, more, many more uh, students have already answered. So, good job. But I find very few people answering. I want more and more people to answer the question. Those of you who have watched, all of you have not answered. So, guys, please make sure that you answer the question asked at the uh, end of the session as your homework in the comment section. Okay, don't forget to do that. Okay, guys, let's get started with the recap question. So, rapid fire round, guys. Who was Wilhelmine? What was she doing? Come on, people. Answers all in the chat box. Everybody should answer in the chat box. Come on. Okay. Are we ready to look at the answer? Are we ready to check the answer? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. It is, yes, it is Wilhelmine was old Casper's granddaughter. She was playing on the grass. Okay, guys. So, how many of you have got this correct? A thumbs up, please. I think most of you would have uh, got this correct, right? Good job, people. Good job. Next question on your screen. Why did Peter King come home? Answers in the chat box again. Hurry up. 
quickly read through the options guys okay three two one let's check the answer yes so peter king had found something which he had brought home to ask his grandfather what it was very 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 simple question and you remember what it was actually it was a skull right and now let's proceed further i've already talked about robert sade right in the previous session so just glance through it once again he was a uh, definitely <coughs> romantic poet and he was a radical just like other romantic poets okay and in this particular poem he has talked about it this is an anti war poem if you remember i talked about blenheim the historical background okay what was the battle of blenheim between whom was it fought okay all of this was discussed in the previous session okay so please do not forget to check the previous session out now coming to the sixth stanza we had already completed till the fifth stanza now we'll move ahead and we'll go to the sixth stanza theek okay? hai let's read together it was the english casper cried who put the french to rout but what did they what of the war i could not well make out but everybody said both he that it was a famous victory very 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 important line is it was a famous victory and this has been repeated it is like a refrain it has been repeated to emphasize on the point of the brutality of war but still being called and very very ironically still it is called the famous victory all right so rout is expel or force to flee both is said this is the example of archaism okay i'll be talking about the figures of speech of poetic devices as well so this is no longer used it has been uh, obsolete already it was used it's an old english word theek okay? hai okay now let's see what the poet is trying to say casper said that it was the english who had completely defeated the french so it was fought between the english and the french i told you in the previous class as well but he was not sure as to what they fought for the reason of war very 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 important this poem points out the layman's perspective towards war we all are layman because we have no experience uh, what happens in the real back uh, you know real battlefield right so similarly casper also had no experience and that is why he is also not sure about what they were fighting for okay he only repeated what people generally said was a famous victory so we also watch the news and we just comfortably say okay we have won the war so this winning or a victory in war is very very ironical because ultimately the harsh reality is both the sides actually have great losses in terms of uh, human life so many lives are lost okay it is clear that the response of the old man was only conventional very 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 important conventional is you know typical okay uh, which actually people usually say okay according to the convention or according to the according to whatever people uh, you know say usually okay so it is not his own opinion because he himself does not know exactly what is happening in the battle field right so that is something which is very important because that actually happens in reality with us as well we as laymen we also do not know what exactly is happening what is the politics behind war we are not aware of that what we see is which party has won what is the ultimate result right so but we 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 turn a blind eye to the harsh reality the brutality of the war right where so many lives are lost that is the point which the poet tries to point out now it was a famous victory is irony i have told you already why because what kind of a victory it was when it was uh, when uh, you know both sides had to lose in terms of human lives right so which was discussed in the previous session as well okay now question for you people guys the battle of blenheim was fought between England and Spain, Spain and France, Germany and England, England and France. People, answers in the chat box. Everyone should answer. 
Okay. Three, two, one. Let's check the answer. Yes, it was England and France. I had just now told you. Good job, good job, good job. Great people, great. Moving ahead to the next question. Stan, sorry, next answer. My father lived at Blenheim then. One little stream hard by. He burned his dwelling to the ground and he was forced to fly. So with his wife and child he fled. Nor had he where to rest his head. Very, very, very important. First, let us see the vocabulary. Yon is beyond. Okay. Hard by, very near. Dwelling is a place of living. To fly is to escape. So please note the word meaning of yon because that's what is new to you. Okay. And hard by is very near. Please don't miss out the vocabulary part. Okay. Now, coming to the explanation, the old man, Casper, continued to speak about war and he pointed to a nearby stream and he said that his father used to live there at Blenheim. Now, what happened during that war? So, whenever there is a warlike situation, who is the ultimate sufferer? It is the general people, the general mass, apart from the soldiers who are losing their lives. The general mass, they are the sufferers. Yes, we have seen that. We will see that in the uh, story called The Old Man and the Bridge as well. The same thing. Okay. So, his house was burned down and he was forced to run away with his wife and child. Now, try to think about it. What was the fault of uh, this man? I mean, Casper's father. What was the fault of him? But unfortunately, his house was uh, you know, burned down and he had to move away from his house. Now, just try to, you know, empathize with those people and understand what the, you know, what kind of trauma do they need to face when there is uh, this warlike situation, right? He had no place to take shelter. So, let's suppose if somebody tells me, I mean, if I am forced to move out of my house permanently, okay, suddenly, then just imagine uh, without any place to you know, take shelter. Just imagine the situation. What kind of difficulties would I have to go through? What kind of trauma would I have to face? Right? So, we cannot even imagine that kind of trauma. But this is a reality, guys. That is what happens. It had been happening throughout. If you see, if you look at the uh, turn to the pages of your history book, you will see this happening over and over again, over and over again. Right? So, just try to think about the trauma that the general mass face. Right? Which we will also see in the old man and the bridge. Now, the question is, who are they referred to in the, in the third line? The English soldiers, old Casper's family or the French family? Very, very simple, guys. Answers in the chat box. Come on. Three, two, one. Okay, let's check. Okay. So, they are referred to the French army. Now, let me take you back to the stanza and show you where is this they. They is over here, right? So, it's not Casper's family. It is they burned his dwelling to the ground. Who? Of course, the, um, you know, the warring parties were French and England. So, uh, since Casper is English, so definitely they would be the French people. Alright guys, so that is the answer. Moving ahead with the next answer. With fire and sword, the country down was wasted far and wide. And many a children, mother then, and newborn baby died. But things like that, you know, must be at every famous victory. So just look at the contrast the first line, he's, I mean, in this particular line, third line, and many a children and mother then, and newborn baby died. So, he is painting the picture, the brutal picture of a war. And then, immediately in the next line, he's saying, but things like that, you know, must be. That means it should happen at every famous victory. How, how very ironical is that? Right? 
So first is a uh, childing mother, mother who is expecting a child, right? Childing mother, that means a woman who is expecting a child, okay? So see, the whole country was ruined <laughs> far and wide with fire and sword, of course, because of the warfare. Many expectant mothers and newborn child or children died. Ironically, the man added that such things do happen to win a grand victory. That means, after painting the gruesome picture where newborn babies are dying, expectant mothers are dying, immediately what is he saying? He's saying that these such these things would happen in a great victory, right? So. That sharp contrast in the tone of Casper is so very ironical. And that is what happens uh, from a layman's perspective. We all see so many brutal things happening throughout, even if it is with our family. But then uh, this is what we say. These things, these things are bound to happen. Isn't it, guys? So now, poetic devices, again, famous victory is irony. So guys, I hope you people are enjoying so far. And uh, this poem is so very, uh, you know, it has got a great relevance for our contemporary lives, right? So if you want to join us further to gain 100% knowledge and score 100% marks, what do you need to do, guys? You need to visit the link in the description box and pin comment. Now, in Vedantu, we are promising you your improvement. Your improvement is guaranteed. So, right now, guys, you must have been facing lots and lots of problems with this pandemic on and the entire educational system going haywire. Absolutely no uh, systematic and planned approach in your studies, right? You must have, have uh, must have, uh, must be having so many doubts, right? No proper source to clarify all your doubts. No notes, no questions, nothing to practice. So you people must be having a very difficult time, right? So we are there to help you out in such a difficult time with Vedantu Improvement Promise, which is guaranteeing your improvement. So we have live classes, unlimited live classes with fun and high level quiz questions. I'm sure you people must be waiting for the next mentee session because you people enjoy quiz questions. And also you learn. It's not just the fun part, it's also the learning part that happens. And in a very, very interactive manner. So guys, in our platform, you do not have to wait for the mentee session because in each and every session you will have fun and high level learning together it's a combination of fun and high level learning together in our platform and uh, you know you have and that too unlimited that's amazing right plus you can compete with the students throughout the world you get a lot of exposure even if you watch the replays you won't feel bored because you have live quizzes even there you can participate in live quizzes plus you have the leaderboard at the end of each session, which will show your overall class rank and earn points. And your content can be downloadable with handwritten notes of the master teachers. Isn't that amazing, guys? So no problem with notes, no problem with doubts also. Why? Because we have amazing doubt-solving feature in our platform where each and every doubt of yours would be catered to by our class teachers then and there. Apart from this also, we also have, you know, a special doubt app which about which I would be talking very soon. Plus, each and every session would give you an assignment solving which will help you understand how much you've understood. Quality tests, these are the uh, tools to measure your performance because only and only if you can measure your performance, you can see the improvement. You have free unlimited micro courses and crash courses. Now, let's say some chapter is going on in your school and you want to revise that chapter. So you can do that with the help of micro courses. Or let's say you want to have a class apart from the long term class that you have enrolled into. You have want to have uh, you want to check another teacher 
who's your favorite one who's not having the long term batch that you are enrolled into right so you can have the micro course of that particular teacher as well so i am also having lots and lots of micro courses right now so you can join there as well okay plus so all of these are for free do not have to pay anything extra that too and less price guys so we have three types of uh, plans uh, light classic and plus uh, live interactive online classes test series analysis assignments and notes doubt solving during the class these are the four features which are common for each plan all right and i was telling you about the special doubt solving mode uh, app that is there for the classic so guys first let me talk about the light see light is <clears throat> dekho light has this plan okay where we have all these features which i have talked about and you can try this plan even for a month okay it's only 2070 all right guys and then classic classic is try for one month only at 3100 plus you will have the doubt solving on mobile app all right and then finally you could have the plus plus is you will have personal mentor as well and you could try the complete course at as 53999 you can also give one month trial that is only at this price theek hai that is 4050 okay you can get 10% discount after applying the coupon code so please don't forget that all right guys so and all these micro courses crash courses are absolutely free they are auto enrolled and we are definitely guaranteeing your improvement so that's how we are ensuring and assuring your progress if not then we would be returning your course fee what we need from you is a minimum of 75% of completion of the assignment test and 75% of the uh, attendance that's all that we need and then your uh, improvement is guaranteed that is our promise guys okay so what you need to do is just visit the link and use the coupon code these are your batch starting dates please take a note of the batch starting date okay guys so now let's get back to the session stanza 9 they say it was a shocking sight after the field was won for many thousand bodies here lay rotting in the sun but things like that you know must be after the famous day so again a horrific picture being painted and immediately after that a very contrast uh, a line which is very contrasting in tone has been said so the fact that the grandfather is you know actually <coughs> so actually painting the gruesome picture of the bloody war in such a casual manner is a reminder to the audience or the reader that this is what happens in reality this is what happens even today right so people said that it was a terrible sight thousands of body was lying uh, was actually rotting in the sun so that was the kind of picture that was a kind of the situation in the war okay where people uh, dead bodies were lying rotting in the sun okay so they were stripped of even the last rights the dignified human life okay so this uh, uh, this is the you know uh, case and also uh, so many people have lost their lives the children the expectant mothers so what kind of victory is this if this is the situation that is happening why is it named as famous victory okay now poetic devices over here uh, irony we have already done for many a thousand bodies is hyperbole which i think i have talked about in the previous session as well just like you know hyperbole is exaggeration uh, you have it in daffodils as well 10000 i saw at a glance so you actually did not count 10000 you just say it in a uh, way of exaggerating so here also right the same idea now question guys what does this poem tell us about gaspar he was a learned person he was an ignorant man who could not understand the implications of war or he was a soldier very 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 important question and a very easy one as well please put 
down your answers in the chat. Three, two, one. Let's see. Yes, he was an ignorant man who could not understand the implications of word. Layman, just like me and you, we also do not have any idea about the real battlefield. Right? Okay, now stanza 10. Great praise the Duke of Marlborough won and our good prince Eugene. Why? It was a very wicked thing, said Wilhelmine, said little Wilhelmine. Nay, nay, my little girl, quoth he. It was a famous victory. Now, at the last stanza, we see a huge generation gap where Wilhelmine is saying he's, she's quoting the war as wicked thing. Uh, the grandfather, on the contrary, is saying, no, no, it's not a wicked thing. It was a famous victory, right? So, what happened, guys? Okay, first vocabulary. It was nay is no, again, archaic, and quote is said. Or quoted, right? Now, old Casper shard praises on the Duke of Marlborough and good Prince Eugene who won the war for the English, right? So this is what happens. Only few. And what about the you know thousands of soldiers who got martyred? We do not know even their names, but they lost their lives. This is what happens even today. Only the few people are praised. That is the whole politics of war, right? That is very difficult for the common people like you and me to understand what is going on in the real picture. Okay, so little Wilhelmine's shocking response. Yes, she remarked in disgust that war was the most wicked thing. She's acting as the mouthpiece of the poet over here. Okay, the poet's uh, opinion is also the same as little Wilhelmine. That if this is the scenario in a war, why do we call it a famous victory? We should rather condemn war. We should rather treat war as uh, something which is disgusting, a necessary evil, and not glorify war just as the uh, old grandfather is glorifying it. And sharing praises on Duke of Marlborough and Prince Eugene for winning the uh, battle. There is no winning in any battle. There is always losing because so many young lives are lost at their prime in a battlefield. Right? She could not tolerate the old man's praise of war. And that is what the poet also thinks. Her grandfather weakly asserted that she was wrong and it was a famous victory and that is what the popular uh, sentiment also says okay so uh, what happens is when there is a war people get martyred right people die but we don't even some of the soldiers they are nameless we do not even i mean we do not even remember them right but they they sacrifice their lives just imagine and we still think that war is something which we should you know, have, uh, which is glorified. So that's a big question mark, right? Okay, moving ahead. The poet brings about a confrontation between the conventional, the typical, and the instinctive responses towards war. Instinctive response is the response of Wilhelmine, who is acting as the mouthpiece of the poet over here. Now, the, the old man's defense of war, he is constantly defending, saying, no, no, little girl, this is a this was a famous victory. And Prince Eugene is a good man. He had, you know, won for uh, the English. He had won the battle. He has not lost his life. What about those soldiers who have lost their lives in the battlefields? What about them? Do people remember them? No. They are nowhere found in the pages of our history books. Right? The old man's defense of war is conventional and unacceptable. Whereas the child's innocent condemnation of war is natural and instinctive response. And that brings about the reality of the wicked thing called the famous victory by the old man. Very, very, very important lines. Please keep this in mind. Okay. Poetic devices, nay, nay, my little girl, Kothi. So here, nay, nay is archaic. 
fourth is also archaic. These are the old English words which are no longer used. Okay? Uh, I mean, no longer used in day-to-day -day conversation. Famous victory I have already explained. Question, guys. What was the wicked thing? War, army, victory. What do you think, guys? The mon answers in the chat box, everyone. People should respond in the chat box. Okay? Three, two, one. Let's check. War. Good job, everyone. Good job. So, guys, I hope you people enjoyed so far and you people are still enjoying. So, don't forget to hit the like button. Okay? Share the video amongst your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Coming to the 11th stanza. And everybody praised the Duke who this great fight did win. But what good came of it at last? Quoth little Peter Kid. Why that I cannot tell, said he. But it was a famous victory. Very important lines again. Old Casper again referred to the public play phrase. Now this is the public phrase which is conventional. And old Casper is also having the conventional opinion. Okay. For the glorious victory. Now what kind of, now this is the glorification of war. When you call the victory as glorious, that is you are glorifying war. Right. And old Casper was also doing the same thing. And may, most of us also do. But this poet is a, this poem is a reminder that wars cannot be termed as glorious. They are a necessary evil. They should be condemned. They should be avoided as far as possible. Right? Little Peter Kin, like, like his sister, failed to appreciate the views of his grandfather. So just like Wilhelmine said that uh, this is a wicked thing, similarly, wick, uh, similarly, little Peter Kin also failed to appreciate the views of war. He wanted to know what good came of it. Very, very important question. What good comes of war? People are destroyed. People are uh, leaving their homes. So many young lives are dying. What is good about war? What is there to glorify about war? That is a question that often we forget to ask ourselves. Right? The old man was puzzled and said that he could not tell what what is the ultimate result that he knows? Who won? Who lost? That is the ultimate result. But what good came out of it? How are we benefited of, of war? That we cannot say. That is very, very ironical once again. Because still we assert war as a famous victory. Despite knowing that there is nothing uh, good that comes out of war. Rather, there is destruction all over. Still, we assert this as a famous victory. Okay. Poetic devices, we have already discussed these. Right? So, guys, with that, we have come to the end of the poem. And I would like to end with a very famous quote by Albert Einstein who said, Killing under the cloak of war is nothing but an act of murder. Yes, it is a systematic butchering of young lives. What is war? A systematic butchering of young lives. Under, under the cloak of war. Cloak is cover. Okay. So, under the cover of war, you are actually murdering thousands and thousands of lives. Even Emperor Ashoka... Uh, realized this and he gave up war after the horrific scene at Kalinga War. You remember your uh, history, right? He gave up war and he started propagating the idea of peace. Just imagine Emperor Ashoka, King Ashoka the Great. Because for a king who has always been born and brought up in the midst of, you know, fighting and, uh, you know, all of this warfare, after seeing the horrible, uh, you know, picture of war in front of him, because he had the real experience of war, right? He gave up war. So if he could do this, why can't we? 
right so even einstein was absolutely against war he was an advocate he was a great advocate of peace and he uh, if you have uh, there's a there's a chapter on einstein albert einstein for the cbsc people if you get time guys do read that chapter okay so with that guys we will come to the we have come to the end of the session i hope you people enjoyed and uh, you people have realized also i think this is a poem which uh, touches all of us and brings to us the very 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 relevant issue in our contemporary lives as well right we can all relate this poem uh, even today when we are fighting so much there's a uh, war cold war going on everywhere in especially the border areas so we should think about one question what will happen what is the ultimate result what good comes out of it nothing at all right so it's better to avoid war rather than always be proactive in you know uh, creating this war like situation right so homework question is explain and discuss the themes in the poem please do post the homework question guys i am finding very few people posting questions uh, for posting their answers do post your homework answers in the comment section along with the word of the day and do make sentences with the word that i talked about at the beginning of the session don't forget to do these three tasks in the homework question and i'll be taking a uh, few few of your names in the previous session who have completed the task okay guys so make sure you do that and make sure you hit the like button share the video amongst your friends subscribe to the channel if you haven't till then take care bye bye